welcome back to the Trademark Sports YouTube channel. Today is the preview of the Gold Coast Titans 2024 season. Um, look, we're going to talk about their ins and outs of their squads, some exciting things that Titans are looking for, some question marks to have around their team and their squad and how they're going to go. And then we'll also go over what well, they think their best 17 is and where I think they'll finish this season. So if you're excited, make sure you drop a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more because we're going to do every single team. So if you're not a Titans fan and you're a fan of another club, make sure you subscribe so you stick around and make sure you can watch your team's video. But honestly, let's just get straight into it. So the Titans for 2024, sorry, I nearly said 2023, uh, 2024 have made a couple changes to their squad. Nothing, I mean, nothing major, I guess. But look, so they brought in Keenan Palacio, which is, I think, a fantastic signing. He was really starting to hit his straps towards the end of the season at the Broncos. And I think that's a really astute uh, get. They've also brought in Harley Smith Shields, who I imagine would be on a very small contract. So again, it's low risk, high reward for the Titans. I think those two recruitments are honestly fantastic. The one that isn't there, though, is not going to be playing, but he's going to be affecting the way they play. Des Hazel is a huge signing for the Titans. I think he will definitely get the best out of a lot of those players there at the Titans. And look, if the way that Des Hazel goes, like, and the way he's, like, so his track record, rather, like it, mainly both times, like even in 2021, they got to a prelim final. Uh, the Bulldogs got to a grand final. Mainly, he won two comps, I believe, there, like the first time he was there. So he's got the runs on the board. Um, for the Titans, which they haven't really had before. Like, you haven't really had a top-tier coach uh, throughout their history. So it's going to be interesting to see how they go. Um, it might take them a year to adjust, but look, I think if you're a Titans fan, you've got to be super excited about that signing. Um, um, on the contrary, they're out. Aaron Booth uh, retired, unfortunately, for him. He's just career didn't work out the way that we expected it to. Patrick Herbert, Cruz Leeming, who played a couple games, and Thomas McCauley have left. So out of those four players, no one's really affecting... And making an impact in first grade. So I think, like, you've got Keenan Palace there who will 100% make an impact in first grade this season, and Harley Smith Shields, who, given the opportunity, could become a, a quite decent player. So I think their uh, recruitment has been really, really good. Um, we'll move on to some question marks I do have about uh, the Titans. Now, I mean, this, this sort of got answered the other day in the press, but like, how do you fit Brimson, Campbell, Foran, Boyd, and Keanu Kinney all in the same team? Um, so, because you've got, I think AJ Brimson's supposedly playing center. I love how like we're in like mid January and we're talking about who's me playing in round one. We haven't even seen him trial. We haven't seen anything like. It. I just the media beat up is just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, like Brimson in the centers, Campbell fullback, four and six, Boyd seven, Kinney fourteen. I assume you've also got Tommy Weaver there. Uh, they've all got to fit in somehow. Um, but the other question is like. Will the Titans actually buy into the Des Hasler system? Like, it seems like it's very high intensity. Um, like, a lot of those sort of things. Like, it's a bit, a bit old school, in a sense. And I think they've got a couple of players there who, like, especially their big boys, like your David Fafitas and your Tinos and stuff, that kind of seem to run their own race a little bit and can sometimes sort of out... I don't know. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is like out sh out shoot. That's not not the word I'm looking for, but like sort of go above the coach a little bit. Like obviously I don't know these guys personally or anything, but um, I just think that sometimes it seems like they can they have their own own thoughts and ways about how they should be playing and just decide to do that instead. And like obviously like their their egos there. Like their their big name players on big money is Des Hazard going to be able to handle that? He's done it before. I think you'll have no troubles with it. But look, it just. It's just a question I have about the Titans is whether they will buy into a Des Hasler system, um, which is something probably very different to what they've had before, and that's probably a good thing because Titans haven't had that much success, especially in the last 10 years. Um, and the other question mark I have, and I think it's actually very, very um, imperative to how they go this season, is can Sam Verrill stay fit this season? Um, obviously, last year, they started the season really, really good, and Sam Verrill started the season really, really good. I think he's a fantastic player. On his day, can be one of the better nines in the competition. Like, it was one of his first games in a row, and he scored a try in a grand final. When like you've got a team with so many superstars around you, and he backed himself, and that's what I think I love about Sam Verrills is he's got does have a lot of confidence in his ability and in his game, and rightly so. Like he's a fantastic player, but just so far in his career, just hasn't really been able to string a run of games together. And I think it's going to be imperative for the Titans because with him, they're such a better side. Like They're so, so good when he's on the field, but it's just about keeping him there on the field. Uh, like, honestly, look, we're going to talk about where I think they're going to finish later, but with Sam Verrills on the park, I 
think they could be a shout for the top eight this season. So we move over to some exciting things for the Gold Coast Titans in 2024. You have Des Hasler. You have one of the best coaches in the competition. There's not very many coaches actually getting around that have won a comp at the moment. I think you've got like Wayne Bennett, Craig Bellamy, Shane Flanagan, Nathan Cleary, not Nathan Cleary, wow, Ivan Cleary, um, Des Hasler, Ricky Stewart, and I think that might be it. It's probably one or two maybe that I'm forgetting in there, but as far as I'm aware, like that's all there is. That's what six out of seventeen coaches around the competition. So that's a pretty good strike rate. Um, but yeah, like and does has he gets rugby league. He's got a great rugby league mind. He suits the Gold Coast as well with the long golden locks for his age and that sort of thing. Like he just he does scream a bit Gold Coast. So I think he'll have no trouble fitting in there. Um, and I think like look, this is the thing as well. Like the next exciting thing I want to talk about is like their future is so so bright if everyone can stay together and buy in. So they got a really good crop of young players like. Fafita and Tino are still only 23. Tanner Boyd's 23. You've also got Khan Pereira, Campbell, Weaver, like Keanu Kinney. They're so, like, still so, so young. I think even um, AJ Brimson might be like 26 or something. So he's still got another five or six years of like quality first grade left in him. That's the thing like, with Tino and Fafita. They could be around for another 10 years, especially with the way that like, the body science is and that sort of thing now. Like, it is exciting if you're a Titans fan. Like, I would be pretty stoked about like the way that things are heading towards the future, uh, especially given what you've been through in the last five years. Another exciting thing I've got is Bo Firma comes back from injury. So I think it was, what, 2022, he killed it. Fafita was a bit quiet. And 2021, Fafita was a monster. 2023, Fafita was a monster again. Is 2024 the year of Fafita and Bo Firma just killing it? Like Obviously, he's off the back of an ACL, I believe, and usually it takes players around 12 months to sort of refine their form again, their confidence in their body, and just get used to the contact and that sort of thing again. But if both Firmo can hit the ground running, and you've got both those guys on an edge, that makes it so much harder for teams to defend because you've got decent centers there, pretty good halves. Like it, yeah. It just the game, the things you can do with the game plan if you have both um, second rows firing is pretty pretty exciting for the Titans, and it's something definitely to look forward to for in 2024 if he can hit the board, ground running. So let's talk about the Titans' best 17. So we'll start with their fullback. Let's talk about the Titans' best 17. We'll start with their fullback. I have the obvious choice there with Jaden Campbell. Obviously, it's come out in the media that I think AJ Brimson is going to be starting the season at centre. Look, we'll see how it goes. Um, it's one of those things. I think you got to wait till, until at least Origin. If it's not working, it's not working. You can like, make some changes, see what happens. But I think that's the best option so far. Um, so on one wing, I've got... Um, uh, Carl Pereira, who broke the Titans' try scoring record in his rookie season. Crazy. Um, and then on the other side, i got Philip Sammy. My center's AJ Brimson. And the other one I've got is Brian Kelly. There's a few options you could have there. You could have Aaron Shop. I think he's another goal-kicking option uh, from back in the day. There's also there's someone else I'm missing there. Um, oh, Jojo Fafita as well. So they do have the center options, which is good. Competition for spots is always a good thing. It's going to push it, like these players so much more. In the halves, I have uh, Kieran Foran and Tanner Boyd. Now, what is the question here? Is what's the go with Tommy Weaver? He's one of the like we saw him play towards the end of the season, and he was good. He's one of the best youngsters in the halves, getting around in the country. And I just think he's like, look, don't rush it. You don't need to be playing first grade right now. Get some more time playing against men in Q Cup. Q Cup's a pretty good competition. So, I think one more season there if he can go out and just light it up and. Because I, th- I have a feeling this season will be Kieran Foran's last. So you're going to need someone to play the six next year. There, in come Tommy Weaver after like confidence up and everything, rather than just coming to the first game. He's probably not ready for a full season there yet, anyway, and then just losing his confidence. And then, like, you sort of end up like these guys, like a Bud Sullivan, a Tyrell Sloan, that sort of thing, that they're still really, really talented players, but their career just sort of has taken some hits because they had were forced to play too much first grade too early. Um, so, moving into the four pack, we've got Mo Fodawaka, who got their player of the year last season, and Tino as the front rowers, obvious choices. Look, they've got some decent backups, but no one's really going to beat them for those spots. And then at nine, Sam Verrills, obviously. Uh, and then again, like in the second row, pick themselves for Fida and Bo Furmore. At 13, I have Aaron Clark. I don't know why he hasn't really been playing there more. I think Des Hasler with his very, very astute football mind, we'll pick him there because he's an outstanding 13. Uh, and then onto the bench, my 14, because of the way the game's played right now, I think you do need a second hooker there, which is why I've got Chris Randall. I think he's impressed 
last season at the Titans. Like, obviously, Greg Marju killed it at the Knights, but the reason that no one was talking about the fact that the Knights, no, sorry, the Titans swapped him was because Chris Randall was doing his job and playing quite good football as well, um, which is a credit to him. We've also got Keenan Palacio, the new signing on the bench. Alternatively, you could have him at 13 or starting and put uh, Tino, like starting at Prov and put Tino at 13, but look, I just think you'd sort of just trying to outthink the room there. Uh, Kent, but Palacio at 15. Uh, we've got Payne Hass's younger brother, Klesse, at 16. And I've also got um, Isaac for Arsul Malawi at 17. So there's so many like players there at the Titans. I haven't got Isaac Liu in there. I just think he's probably a little bit past it, to be honest. Um, but there's other players there. I'm trying to think of their names right now, like Joe Stimson. Um what's the other Sam McIntyre like there's a fair few players there at the Titans I haven't even included in that best 17 like I've got Keanu Kinney there as an 18th man and I think got to try and find a spot for him somewhere but he's a little bit like Tommy Weaver in that he doesn't need to be playing first grade just yet he's got a massive like he's got massive potential a massive future ahead of him he's like 19 I think like it just settle down it's, he'll get his chance um, as long as the Titans can give him minutes here and there so he doesn't get frustrated and then look somewhere else because like there are certain clubs around the competition that are looking for a fullback so as long as you can lock him down and make him make sure he's dedicated and committed to the titans i think like you've got no problems there but okay so now we're going to talk about where i think the titans will finish honestly i this is a bit of a bold prediction for me but i think they could be the surprise team in the competition in 2024 so we saw the warriors last year make top four out of nowhere in 2022 saw the cowboys make top four out of nowhere could this potentially be the season that the Titans do that? Maybe, 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 maybe not. Um, I think, like, honestly, they could range anywhere between 4th to 13th. I can't believe, honestly, like, we're talking about the Titans so early in this series because I can't believe they finished bottom four last season. They're a way better side than that. I think they'll push for top eight this season for sure. Like, they were in there last year until they got rid of Justin Holbrook to bring in Des Hasler, and in hindsight, that might work an absolute charm. But we'll see, like... I mean, we'll have to wait and see this year, next season, season after, if that was the right call or not. But yeah, I do think we'll see Titans play finals football in 2024. Let me know how you think they're going to go, um, how you think their squad's looking up, shaping up, like what your best 17 would be. Uh, if you like this video as well, we made it this far, comment Gold Coast Titans 2024 so I know that you've made it this far and you're a real one. Um, like the video, leave a subscribe, like just tell me, like, give me some, some nice general positive feedback. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.